Talk, the weekly show where I give my thoughts on everything painting. Also, just want to remind you, if you're liking these videos, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have thoughts, questions, things you want to see videos on, anything you want to ask me, just let me know in the comments section. Also, if you're looking for a full uh, real-time uh, painting tutorials, I offer those on my Patreon page, which is linked below as well. All right, let's jump on into it. So I hear a lot that people struggle to find the inspiration of paint, and I totally understand that. Um, I don't really have this problem now because I've chosen to make a career out of painting, so kind of have to paint every day. There's that obligation built into it. But I remember, you know, in the past, not too long ago, I would just go spans without painting uh, for no real good excuse. Uh, so I know what it's like to not be motivated to do it or just not be inspired. So I want to give you some advice and some strategies and tools that you can use to make sure this doesn't happen so you can paint as much as possible. The first thing I want to talk about is inspiration and kind of break that down. Um, nobody should be waiting for inspiration to paint. Uh, if you're, you know, just waiting for something to come into your life and you see something, you're like, oh, I got to paint that. If, you, if you're waiting for something like that, you are, you're doing it wrong. Um, now does that happen? Yes. And do that happen to people and then they create paintings out of that? Yes. But that should not be dictating, uh, uh, one of my neighbors is a Chiefs fan. Anyway, that it, that shouldn't be dictating how often and when you know you paint. If you actually, if you wait for inspiration to actually paint, that means you're not going to paint that often, which means you're not going to get that good. And I think that this is linked to another point that I want to talk about, which is subject matter. Um, not everything you paint, you need to have some relationship or thoughts or point of view on the subject matter. I was, you know. I feel like most of the time you shouldn't because you need to be practicing you know even yeah even if you want to be the kind of painter that paints things that do have a meaning that that means something to you that have a purpose that have a story uh a narrative anything like that you still need to acquire the skills and the tools to be able to express that or to tell that story or that that message that you want like you're not going to be able to service your idea as good as possible if you don't know how to use the medium that you're using like you need to practice and the better that you know how to do that the better you're going to be able to communicate what you want to communicate so don't fall in love so much with the subject matter on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of practicing you know, if there's something you really love and you want to paint like definitely paint it uh, that's a great way to find motivation to paint is to find a subject matter that you want to paint and I'll get into that in a little bit later but you need to fall in love with the process of painting not the end result I know everybody wants to make a good painting it feels good when you make a good painting it feels bad when you fail and don't do a good painting but you really need to enjoy the process and honor the effort even when you do fail you realize that you did learn something even if you can't identify what you learned on that painting you learned it you know, you're going to need to fail more than you succeed if you want to get good at this. So, you know, paint anything, you know, it doesn't, you don't need to have a meaning to it or, you know, like that's why a lot, you know, artists will paint, you know, still life of fruit. They have no connection to the fruit most of the time. They are interested in the process of capturing the fruit, of, of, of capturing it the best that they can with the medium that they're using. And when I say studies, you know, I always heard people say that early on when I was painting, like, do studies, do studies, studies. And it never, like, I was always like, what is a study? Like, am I taking notes? You know, what does study mean? Like, what am I studying? Should I be thinking while I'm painting? You know, taking notes on this and that. Studying just means, you know, just painting something. You know, if I'm going to do a study of painting these, you know, this tree outside the window. You know, I'm just, it's it pretty much just going to be just painting the tree. I'm not worried about background. I'm not really worried about a composition, you know, placement on the canvas, you know, anything like that. I'm not, I'm not trying to do a complete painting. I'm just going to just see if I can paint that tree and see what I learn, you know, from painting the tree, what I learn about value, what I learn about color, you know, you know, what I learn about, you know, drawing the tree and the branches and, and the surface and the texture and stuff, you know, just kind of just practicing. You see something and it's like, oh, I'll, I'll be interested in painting that, you know, and and you paint it and you learn something. Is it completed painting that you're gonna sell or show or post online? No, probably not, but you're gonna get better. And once you start to really enjoy that, just the 
process of painting, you're gonna wanna paint every single day and there's gonna be a lot less resistance to you painting every day when you just really, when you're looking forward to just painting, not looking forward to the completed painting at the end. And this can be difficult, you know, with social media and stuff this day, everybody wants to post something, everybody wants to post something every day, everybody wants to show off the best that they can do. And, you know, if you do a painting and it's not good and you don't want to show it, you don't want to post it, like that's fine. That's what you should, don't, don't be let, don't let that factor of other people's approval dictate how much you paint or what you paint. All right, that kind of goes right into another thing that I wanted to talk about, which is paint what you want to paint and don't listen to what anybody else says. I had, a, you know, I had an art teacher in high school that would make fun of like pretty much landscape painting. She's like, oh, you're just going to paint, uh, you know, just typical, you know, landscape with the river and the mountains and the trees. It's like, yeah, I like that. Like, that's, that's what I want to do. And you know, I went to a college and took painting courses where they didn't care at all about how you painted. They cared about why you painted. And that was a completely different point of view on painting. You know, I've heard people say fan art is bad. I've heard people say, you know, doing comics is bad. I see people think that, you know, hyper-realism is the best. People that think impression is the best. People that think that, you know, oh, that looks too real. I don't like it. Just take a photo. You know, there's all different kinds. And so the only thing that you can do is do paint what you want to paint. So if you understand like everything that I've said so far, but you're still just having trouble just getting the creative juices going, like actually taking the time to sit down, pick up the brushes, you know, get out the canvas and start painting some things that you can do to get yourself, you know, motivated in the mood. Uh, the best thing that I think is go see good art in person. You know, I think we take that for granted because we, you know, see, you can, it's so easy to see art online, you know, Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that. You can't, you know, lots of your feeds are probably just, con, you know, constant, just art, 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 which can be a bad thing in itself too. Um, you need to, you know, your online, what you consume online is like what you consume in life, you know, if you're constantly consuming bad food, it's gonna have an effect on you. Just like if you're constantly consuming bad content on the internet, it's gonna have an effect on you. This also goes for too much. You know, you can't, it can be kind of demoralized in a way if you have too many amazing artists on your page and you can probably get overwhelmed and be like, oh, like why even start? Like I'm never gonna be this good. It can just be overwhelming to see so many people ahead of where you are uh, that you might not even pick up the brush. So going back to looking at art in person, you know, pretty much every city has some type of like art walk on the first Friday, second, third Friday of whatever. And that, you know, or going to a museum, like you find a museum, go and see really good paintings. When you see in person, it's just something different and it will kickstart your creativity and your, your, your desire to want to paint. So, you know, a lot of museums, you know, there's a certain day of the week where it's free to go. So if, you know, money's tight, there's, there's that, you know, these art walks are free to go, you know, go into an art gallery, just look around and, you know, really look at the paintings, like kind of try and see what they did. You know, how did they, you know, how did they paint something? They look at the brush strokes, their color, stand it from very far, stand, look at it from very far away, look at it really up close and, you know, enjoy it. You know, enjoy the artwork and start thinking about the things that you want to do, you know, things that you, you wish you could paint and that you want to learn how to paint. Another thing that can help you is have more than one painting going on at a time. I normally do this just because, you know, I'll get tired of one painting and I'll want to jump over to another. I'll, I'll do this even with subject matter. I'll, I'll paint, you know, portraits for a little while and I'll get kind of tired of that and I'll jump over to landscapes, get really into that and I'll come back to portraits and you know, kind of bouncing back and forth, or even, you know, just at the same time, I'll, you know, one day work on this painting, next day I work on a different painting, and just being able to rotate uh, what I'm working on just keeps things fresh and keeps me motivated to want to paint every day. And the most important thing to remember is that you will get better with practice. You need to have faith in practicing, and I can't tell you how many times, like, I can distinctly remember certain things. Like, I distinctly remember 
seeing like a picture of a face on a magazine and thinking, how would I ever be able to draw that or paint that? I just can't even fathom it. But I just kept practicing and practicing and practicing and now I can. Don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to your last painting and you're gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have points where you're gonna feel like, oh, I think I got a hold of this, this whole oil painting thing. I think I got it. And then your next painting will just absolutely destroy you. And that's okay. Like, that's what you want. You want, you know, the successes. You need the failures. And just keep practicing. If you fail, identify what you did wrong and try and fix it the next time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram. See what I'm painting on a daily basis at 4 is a 43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.